So let me tell you here as what is alpha gamma coactivation. So as you can see in the slide here, let me take three situations. What is that? Uh, as we know that stretch is the uh, stimulus for the muscle spindles who are stretch receptors, okay? So this is one situation where you have given the weight to the muscle. As you gave the weight to the muscle, there is stretching of the muscle, right? So when there is stretching of the muscle, what is happening? The muscle spindles. So let me take a pen and show you. Here is where we have given the weight. Once we give the weight, there is stretching of the muscles. So if this is my muscle belly, which you are seeing here, okay? This muscle belly has got the extra fusel fibers, okay? Then there is the muscle spindle, which is attached to the interfusal fibers. Good enough. So whenever you give a weight here, if you have tied a weight here, you are actually stretching the muscle. When there is stretch of the muscle, the 1A afferent fibers, the spiral ending of 1A fibers, they go to the spinal cord. Okay, This is the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. This is the ventral horn. They go to the spinal cord. They innervate onto the alpha motor neuron, which is supplying to my extra fusel fibers. And they also give the impulses to gamma motor neuron. So this is my ideal situation, right? So let us now take this situation, what is happening here. So we'll try to see this and understand. You have given a weight. Once you gave the weight, there was stretching of the muscle fibers. So there was stretching of the muscle spindles. The muscle spindles started giving the impulses via 1A fiber. So you got this type of impulses here. Okay. The tension is, uh, although there is a small amount of tension here, you know, the tension is built up here. So what is now going to happen is these 1A fibers are going to synapse, give a monosynaptic, uh, you can say, a connection to the alpha motor neuron. And the alpha motor neuron in response to the afferent impulses coming via 1A fibers, they are going to cause the contraction of the extrafusal fibers. So once there is contraction of the extrafusal fibers, what is happening now? In a situation where we are not imagining of gamma motor neuron, what would have happened is that during that, uh, when there is contraction or shortening of these muscles, our muscle spindles also would have shortened. And when they would have shortened or got slagged, there would have no response or no impulses coming during the period of contraction, right? This is what would have happened if there was no gamma involved in it. But in reality, it doesn't happen. Why? Because once this 1A fiber comes, it not only stimulates the alpha motor neurons, it also stimulates the gamma motor neuron, right? So what is happening for the gamma motor neuron? Gamma motor neuron, which is supplying to the contractile parts of the muscle spindle, they cause the contraction of these contractile parts on the peripheral part, okay? So what will happen? There will be contraction of these elements and so there will be stretching of the muscle spindle. So once this muscle spindle is stretched back again because of gamma motor being stimulated along with alpha motor neuron. So what is the situation? That when there is stretching of the muscle because of the weight, 1A fiber goes, it stimulates both alpha and gamma together. This is what we call as co-activation that it is stimulating both alpha and gamma together. And now alpha is going to cause the contraction of the extrafusal fibers and the gamma is going to cause the contraction of the contractile elements on the peripheral part of my muscle spindle, which in turn is going to keep my muscle spindle taut or stretched. And when it is stretched, it is going to give these impulses even during the contraction or shortening of the muscles, okay? So this is the importance of alpha gamma coactivation. Another thing which you have to keep in mind is that uh, alpha gamma are also under the influence from the higher centers, okay? So we have the fibers coming from the descending tracts as the pyramidal tracts or the extra pyramidal tracts. They are going to go, you know, via the interneurons they are going to go and either stimulate or inhibit my gamma motor neuron. So they can be both stimulatory 
and inhibitory to my alpha and gamma motor neurons. So one thing that is very clear is then 1A is firing, it will stimulate both my alpha as well as gamma. When my descending fibers, motor fibers, who are coming from the up above from the cortex, when they come, they can have both stimulatory as well as inhibitory influence on alpha and gamma motor neurons. Okay, so this is what we known as this, this phenomena where you have the activation of both alpha and gamma together. We call that as alpha gamma coactive.